NVIDIA officially announced their first MCM Monster GPU. There's a new vulnerability that affects pretty much everyone. Zen 5 is on the way, and RX 8000 is getting a huge boost in ray tracing. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, NVIDIA just wrapped up their 2024 GTC conference with their CEO, Jensen Huang. And that's why I'm having to do a talking head video. The conference was already pretty late in the day, and I'm still probably going to be really late getting this video out. Either way, it was well worth the wait because NVIDIA officially announced it. If you've been following this channel, you should at least know the name of NVIDIA's next generation architecture, Blackwell. And just like the league said, yeah, that's it. Although you'll find out pretty quickly that there's quite a bit more things that the leaks were right about. But starting things off, this is NVIDIA's first real MCM GPU. As you can see right here, it's pretty much two distinct GPUs combined into one. And because of that, this GPU is completely massive. This right here is their current generation Hopper H100 GPU, and this beast is Blackwell. Now, NVIDIA themselves didn't really call it an MCM GPU, but obviously that's what it is. You can even see right here, it says they do function as one unified CUDA GPU according to NVIDIA. The two chips are linked via 10 terabyte per second NVIDIA high bandwidth interface connection to ensure that they can properly function as a single fully coherent chip. So yeah, NVIDIA has done it. They've joined the race of combining GPUs to make one behemoth card. It's the B200 GPU proving yet again the leaks were right because NVIDIA is moving their GPUs for uh, acceleration for AI, things like that, to the 200 line, or at least that's what they're calling them, while the gaming is going to be all 100. Before, it was the 100 GPU is the accelerator, then 102, and everything after that were for gaming. But that's not the case anymore. And starting off with some wild specs, you can see it right here. It says, Blackwell versus Hopper, twice the size, a massive leap in computes. Yeah, 128 billion more transistors. That's more transistors. Hopper had 80 billion transistors. This bad boy has 208. So a massive jump when it comes to transistors. Then they claim five times the AI performance, four times the on die memory. I'll get to that stuff in just a second. Then they are definitely making some wild claims. You know, when it comes to performance, they're talking 20,000 teraflops, i.e. 20 petaflops of performance in one GPU. Obviously a massive jump, but you will see in just a second, there is a bit of a caveat for that. Either way, moving back here while discussing the GPU, you can see right here it mentions there's a reason that they went with dual die configuration. It says the B200 will use TSMC's 4NP process node, which is a refined version of the 4N process node that the H100 is built on. And while we don't really know too much about that node, Given it's still considered four nanometers, obviously it's not a massive jump in density or anything like that. So because of that, NVIDIA clearly had to do something. And what they chose to do, instead of packing tons more stuff in the same size GPU, they just made it bigger. But given the fact that the H100 was already massive, and as I've discussed multiple times before, you can only really get so big before the yield rates completely plummet and the GPU just becomes astronomically expensive. So you really can't get much bigger than the H100 because it already uses a full reticle size chip. So now the B200 is using two. This thing is going to be expensive. Like, I don't even want to think about how much. I mean, we could literally be looking at upwards of a hundred thousand dollar chip. Of course, that's just speculation and stuff, but it is going to be expensive. And as you can see, each die has four HPM 3E stacks of 24 gigabytes each. So with two dies, you then have a whopping 192 gigabytes of HPM 3E memory. And this makes for a total of eight terabytes per second of bandwidth. Then moving down to performance, you can see they mentioned the maximum theoretical compute of 20 petaflops. And the way that they're able to do this is because they're now using FP4, while before it only got down to FP8. And this basically allows for twice the throughput of Hopper H100s. So 
Yes, it can technically do 20 petaflops of compute, but if we look at FP8 versus FP8, so we can really sort of see apples to apples, this bad boy still gets 2.5 times the performance of the H100. Now this right here is clearly the proof that they needed to combine two GPUs into one, because if you cut that in half, it's obviously not that much of a difference versus the H100. But the simple fact is that this is two GPUs effectively making one. So yeah, this is a huge performance uplift when compared to the H100. But of course, the question is going to be price. If it's 2.5 times as expensive as the H100, is it really that big of a deal at all? I would say no, but of course it is still really wild to see Nvidia make this move. But what's even more wild is that you can start learning about PC hardware for free thanks to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Just visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld for your free trial. If you're still on the fence, there's a reason Brilliant is the only place I trust when I'm ready to learn more about computer science. For starters, they teach me the way that I actually learn with hands-on interactive puzzles that let me do it myself, and there's thousands of lessons that do just that from their new course on large language models to data analysis, PC memory, and so much more. So there's really something for everyone. And now's the best time to join Brilliant, because they're actually offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld or use the QR code on screen. Plus, when you sign up at Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld, you'll get 20% off their premium membership for life. This is one incredible deal. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code. And next up for today, there is a new exploit that more or less affects everyone. It's called Ghost Race. And to quickly sort of explain this, yes, once again, this is a speculative based attack and this really sort of sums it up well. It says, the issue is that speculative execution can also result in, quote, race conditions, where separate threads attempting to access shared resources create major security vulnerabilities by doing so in a poorly synchronized matter. This exploit is focused on taking advantage of those scenarios, so it's appropriately named Ghost Race. And like I said, this more or less affects everyone. You can actually see it right down here. It says, we have confirmed that all the major hardware vendors are affected by SRCs since regardless of the particular compare and exchange, instruction, implementation, the conditional branch that follows is sub... Yeah, it affects everyone. We're talking AMD, Intel, ARM, pretty much, like I said, everyone. And while their main focus was on Linux, it also looks to affect pretty much every major operating system. So if you're on Windows, this could end up being an issue. Now, the good news is while they're only just now announcing this, they had already given this information to hardware makers so they could create a mitigation. Unfortunately, no one has really come out with anything just yet. In the meantime, they do mention their own mitigation, but all in all, there seems to be a never ending stream of these vulnerabilities, and I have no idea when they're going to stop. But I can at least say that at least from some of these, from from what I've seen, no hacker has actually executed anything like this. It seems to just be something that's in labs and possibilities that could end up happening. But at least as far as what I've seen, it hasn't really happened yet. Fingers crossed that part continues. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Melt so you can keep up on all the vulnerabilities and mitigations that seem to keep coming out. And next up, while talking about things coming out, it looks like AMD Zen 5, meaning Ryzen 9000 CPUs are on their way. As you can see right here, it says back in February, AMD posted GCC compiler enablement support for Zen 5 with the new Zen 5 target ahead of launch. And I actually did cover that story myself. Well, we have some great news. You can see that they say since then it's been rather quiet and nervous not seeing the support merged ahead of the upcoming GCC 14 stable release, but this morning it's finally happened. AMD's Zen 5 processor enablement has been merged to GCC Git in time for the GCC 14.1 stable release, meaning this is support for their upcoming Zen 5 based CPUs and it's now actually going to be released, which should mean that AMD is gearing up for a release, hopefully a little bit later this year, but it's definitely coming. And lastly for today, we finally get some new information on AMD's upcoming RDNA 4-based GPUs. Now, 
you might see this and go, GPU, is this about PlayStation 5? What are you talking about? Well, you'll see in just a second, but as you can see right here, some specs have been leaked for Sony's upcoming PS5 Pro. And starting things off, we will go ahead and say the CPU. It says the CPU is identical to the standard PlayStation 5s. Obviously, that is AMD's Zen 2 based CPU, but the only difference is that it is going to include a quote high CPU frequency mode, which takes the CPU to 3.85 gigahertz. So a fairly okay 10% increase over the regular PS5. But of course, the main thing when it comes to gaming is the GPU, and that is where things get really interesting. As you can see right here, it says rendering is 45% faster than the regular PS5. Don't get too excited about that. That has nothing really to do with it being RDNA 4, specifically because it isn't RDNA 4. Hold on just one second. As you can see right here, it says two to three times ray tracing times four in some cases, 33.5 teraflops. And then down here, it says something very interesting. It says it has 30 workgroup processors are running specialized BVH8 traversal shaders versus 18 workgroup processors running BVH4. So a big part of why you're seeing that really big jump in uh, rendering performance from the regular PS5 is because the integrated GPU comes with 30 workgroup processors instead of 18. So that is obviously quite a bit of a jump over the regular PS5. But the really interesting part is right here. As I said, BVH8. And the reason that's interesting is because Known leaker Kepler on Twitter states this, BVH8 is interesting, not only confirms the PS5 Pro is using RDNA 4's RT engine, but it also confirms RDNA 4 doubles RT throughput per cycle. So basically, Sony is using a heavily customized RDNA 3 GPU. These are technically RDNA 3 cores, but they're bringing up something from RDNA 4. That specifically being BVH8, which, as he states, doubles the ray tracing throughput per cycle. Meaning this is why you see such a massive jump in ray tracing two to three times, even times four in some cases. While yes, there is a bit of a jump from RDNA 2 to RDNA 3, it's nothing like this. All of this means that AMD's next gen RDNA 4, i.e. RX 8000 GPUs, as long as this does end up being the case, which obviously it does look like it, it's set to get a massive jump in ray tracing performance, potentially even catching up with NVIDIA. Now, I don't wanna say that for sure, we really don't know much about NVIDIA's next gen ray tracing cores or anything like that, but we are looking at a huge boost in ray tracing for AMD's next gen GPUs. So while that does it for today, what do you think about NVIDIA's new monster GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash And as always, have a great day.